really wish I would have thought about recording this video a long time ago. I don't know why I didn't. Um, I mean, we talk about pull rates, we talk about data, we talk about all this stuff all the time. And for some reason, I never thought about just compiling a ton of data, going through it and really kind of narrowing down when pull rates really started changing, when it became very, very difficult to complete master sets, when it became very difficult to be a collector. Uh, and I think demand has really, really shifted over the past six months, right? Like we had demand, we talked about demand and supply a lot over the past year and a half or so. People were going into stores, they were going into Target, they were going into Walmart, uh, barren shelves, empty shelves all over the place, YouTube videos, stories, shorts, talking about how they couldn't find any product. The product was not in existence. There was not enough product to, there was not enough supply to meet demand. That was what we were talking about. Now demand has kind of shifted where we had all this kind of product dumped on us uh, at the end of Q4 of 2021 uh, and people are struggling to find the alternate arts that they want, the secret arts that they want, the chase cards that they want. They're buying boxes of Evolving Skies and boxes of Fusion Strike and they're pulling three regular arts or four regular arts for their entire booster box and it's just not as fun. A lot of people have switched over to Japanese product because Japanese product you at least get a guarantee. You're guaranteed that you're going to get at least one secret rare and if you can find a good enough deal on Japanese booster boxes you can get one for what is the retail price on this 50 60 bucks somewhere around there much cheaper than what you would buy for a, a, a normal booster box in the United States uh, and you have you have a guarantee people are dropping 130 140 dollars on boxes of evolving skies and pulling four or five ultra rares total they look at the opportunity to complete a master set of the set that they absolutely love and they think oh my goodness it's gonna be impossible to buy product to buy booster packs at the store and open up every card the slogan has got to catch them all. How am I supposed to catch them all uh, if I can't open up any? I can't open up the cards to pull them. It's it's too difficult. And I know people can buy singles. I get that. Uh, I want singles to sell too. I own my own business. I want my business to be successful. I want cards to be expensive. I want cards to be in demand. I understand the whole concept of people wanting desirability and collectability and things like that. But at the same time, I also want the game to grow. And that's kind of the main thing uh, that I want to focus on. I want the game to grow. I want all the people who entered the hobby to stick around. I want them to go to competitive events and really enjoy themselves. The only way that's going to happen is people continue to enjoy the hobby. A lot of people aren't enjoying the hobby when they're opening up booster packs and pulling absolutely nothing or pulling the same Neuvern V for the 50th time. You know, they're looking for that Umbreon VMAX or the Rayquaza VMAX or something else. And I really want to kind of break down these numbers to give you the best idea of how to spend your collection dollars. And maybe you do start focusing on singles. Maybe you start adjusting things a little bit. Maybe you start focusing on uh, collecting specific cards instead of chasing an entire master set. Uh, but really, this video is kind of designed to throw a bunch of data at you. And there's a lot here. Uh, there's a lot of information here. So I apologize. I don't want to confuse anybody. Uh, I probably should have used an editor, but I'm just... Uh, for those of you who have watched me, I'm just really not that flashy of a guy. I want to give you all the data. I want to give you all the information and let you guys kind of do with it what you think is best for yourself. Uh, well, with that all being said, I'm just going to kind of flip you guys around here and we're going to go through things. I have three tabs at the bottom that I really want to focus on. Uh, sheet 2, Sheet 3, Sheet 4. The first tab I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. I really wanted to focus on the sets that started with Next Destinies and the reason behind that is Next Destiny is when we, we started seeing those EX cards uh, for a second time. Uh, those newer school EX cards, not the old school EX cards, but the newer ones. That's when Ultra Rares really started kind of changing, uh, where Hollow Rares weren't really included in Ultra Rare anymore, I guess. People were more excited about pulling EX cards. Uh, so focusing on Next Destinies, I also didn't include any of the special subsets that came out. No Celebrations, no Shining Fates, no Hidden Fates. Uh, the reason why is because pull rates are substantially higher, significantly better in those. So it's not really vindicative or indicative of what you see from a main series set. And I think that's where a lot of people are struggling. They're comparing, you know, apples to oranges. They're looking at a set like Shining Fates. They're looking at a set like Celebrations and they're seeing these magical pull rates. And then they look at a set like Fusion Strike and they're like, 280 some cards? This is crazy. My pull rates aren't any better. So I didn't, I didn't include those special sets. Uh, on the right hand side here, you've got um, some blurbs. I thought it would be important to kind of put and highlight which set these new rarities kind of got introduced to the card game because some were important gimmicks that kind of stuck around, which obviously increases the amount of ultra rares that a set is going to have because you have an additional rarity. And then other gimmicks that kind of came in and fell off. Like you have break cards that came in, which were really cool, but they fell in the reverse hollow spot. So it didn't really impact your ultra rare pull, which was really neat. And I think 
a lot of people really enjoy that. That's why Brilliant Stars is getting so, so great, uh, such great reviews right out of the gates because you can pull four, five, six character rares in a single booster box and it really makes you feel like you're hitting home runs every time you open up a booster box, which is really, really cool. Uh, but I wanted to focus on a few things that are on this tab. And like I said, I'm not going to go through every row here. Uh, but starting out with Next Destiny is a total of 16 Ultra Rares. For the most part, the entire black and white block had 15 or 16 Ultra Rares, with the uh, exception of Plasma Freeze and Boundaries Cross. Boundaries Cross was the biggest set in the black and white block. It had 153 cards. It's also where we got introduced to Full Art Trainers for the first time. Uh, and then Plasma Storm and Plasma Freeze. Plasma Freeze was the first set where we saw uh, 20 when it comes to Ultra Rares. You had six Secret you had those secret rare Pokemon, super, super cool looking Pokemon, but still only 20 Ultra Rares, not too bad compared to what we have now. On average, you had 16.86 Ultra Rares per set uh, that was released in black and white for a total of 122.85 cards per set, which isn't bad. That's actually, uh, you're looking at what, 15% of your set is made up by Ultra Rares, not too bad. If we move on to XY Base, things change, but not by much. 146 cards in the first set with XY Base, this is where you got Megas introduced. Uh, pull rates for Megas, pretty much regular arts were the same as what you would pull for normal regular arts. Full art Megas had pretty much the same pull rates as what you would pull for a normal full art. Uh, you looked at XY base, only 14 ultra rares in the entire set, no secret rares, so we did not have secret rare uh, energy cards or trainer cards or Pokemon in XY, the introduction of Megas, we had the video game uh, X and Y which introduced Megas, people were really excited about that, Megas were kind of the big thing, uh, XY base did not have any secret rares, that came out in 2014, 146 cards, for the most part then we kind of go back to black and white. Flash Fire, a relatively small set. Furious Fist, relatively small. Phantom Forces, relatively small. Still low secret air counts. Two, three, four. Pretty much throughout the entirety of XY, just low secret air counts. Uh, anywhere between one and four for the entire uh, XY block. Whereas black and white, you had one set that had an even six. Uh, for the most part, every set had about 125 cards, 100 to 125. We had two very large sets, Primal Clash with 164 cards, uh, and then Breakthrough with 164 cards. That's when break cards were introduced for the first time. But if you look at the total Ultra Rare count, things started going up a little bit, especially when we hit Primal Clash. You really started getting more EXs, you started getting more Full Arts, and you saw an increase when it came to Ultra Rare. So if you look, between Phantom Forces, you had 18 Ultra Rares, and then you just jump up to 32 with Primal Clash. That's quite a significant jump. And that really plays a factor when you start looking at pull rates and looking at costs when it comes to trying to open up cards for a master set. That stays pretty steady. Uh, Ancient Origins had 28, then it goes down a little bit. So Breakthrough 20, Breakpoint 21. Then Evolutions, you go all the way down to 21. And Evolutions was a very, very manageable set to complete when it comes to a master set. Didn't have any secret rares, didn't have any gold cards. I know some people say, well, it did have secret rares, and technically you are right, it did have secret rare numbers, but those weren't secret rare rarities. They didn't fall in the hollow rare spot of a booster pack, they just fell wherever in a booster pack, in, a booster pack, in an uncommon slot. Uh, so it didn't impact the numbers at all. Overall, in the XY block, you're looking at about 21 ultra rares per set, with an average of 125.42 cards per set. So a slight increase in the amount of cards per set, a little bit bigger of an increase in the amount of ultra rares per set. That plays an important factor in cost and how much it costs to kind of complete a master set. Sun and Moon is where things really start getting interesting, really start going downhill. That's the introduction of Rainbow Rares. I didn't put it here, but Sun and Moon is when Rainbow Rares kind of entered uh, the format. 37 ultra rares in Sun and Moon, so a giant increase, the most ultra rares we've ever had. 37, 163 cards, that was in 2017, but then look at the jump. 51 in Guardians Rising. That's the amount of ultra rares we saw because Secret Rares kind of started to become more prevalent. People liked Secret Rares, people liked Rainbow Rares. And Rainbow Rares took a Secret Rare spot, but not necessarily increasing the pull rate when it comes to Secret Rares. So 24 Secret Rares in Guardians Rising, by far more than uh, the amount of Full Arts and Regular Arts. Almost Full Arts and Regular Arts put together equal Secret Rares. 51 total Ultra Rares in Guardians Rising really starts making it expensive to try and complete that Master Set. Uh, Ultra Prism is where we had Prism cards get introduced. Kind of a fun gimmick, didn't really get a whole lot of work into it, uh, kind of fell off. Didn't really stay around too long. Unbroken Bonds is where we finally started getting alternate arts. Um, 
234 cards. This is where we really start seeing sets increase. So Lost Thunder, 236 cards. Unbroken Bonds, 234. Unified Minds, 258. And then Cosmic Eclipse, 271. These numbers are super bloated and they really impact the whole picture of the Sun and Moon block. On average, 50.42 ultra rares per set 197.25 uh, cards per set that's a 59 percent increase in ultra rares from the xy block uh, up into the sun and moon block which is crazy that's a huge huge increase per set uh 36 percent increase in set size from xy to sun and moon giant increase again that's where we really start going high and then when we look at uh the sword and shield block this is where you start getting v and v max you also start getting uh rainbow rare trainers that plays a factor on things uh really for the most part kind of does the same story as what we saw with the end of the sun and moon block until you get to uh, chilling rain chilling rain is when things really started changing and that's because we got a ton of alternate arts people love alternate arts and don't get me wrong they're super cool a lot of them are really really cool but with that comes a giant increase in high rarity items so you look at the amount of full arts here in chilling rain 39 and the amount of secret rares 35 you have a total of 97 ultra rares in chilling rain 97 ultra rares. that's 97 ultra rares just ultra rares next destiny has had 103 total cards in the set 103 total cards and now we're looking at 97 ultra rares that's crazy 105 the evolving skies ultra rare count is higher than the entirety of the plasma blast set 105 cards each that's that's just nuts to me um that's crazy, yeah. So if you look at total cards, 233 for Chilling Rain, 237 for Evolving Skies, uh, less than what you saw with Unified Minds and Cosmic Eclipse. Then Fusion Strike, 284, our biggest set. Average, 220.75 cards per set, 67.38 Ultra Rares per set. That's nuts. Uh, Sun and Sword and Shield saw a 25% increase in Ultra Rare count from Sun and Moon to Sword and Shield, 69% uh, increase uh, from X and Y to Sword and Shield. Uh, so the total card count, 11% increase from Sun and Moon to Sword and Shield, 43% increase from X and Y to Sword and Shield. So mm, huge, huge increase when it comes to set numbers. Uh, this is the most important tab of them all. This is the one that's probably going to take a little bit additional time here. I wasn't able to find pull rates for any of the black and white uh, sets just because I watched a lot of box openings, but there just wasn't enough data. There wasn't enough booster boxes where I felt comfortable looking at those numbers as solid pull rates. So I kind of just left it off. It's not overly relevant because black and white numbers are very, very similar to what we saw with X and Y numbers. So if we look here, added columns, uh, the most important number that I want to pay attention to is going to be this number right here. Uh, so the amount of regular arts per box for XY base, you're looking at 3.10 regular arts per box. The amount of full arts per box, just over one. So you're going to get just above one full art per box when it comes to XY base, assuming you're opening up a booster box with XY base. A lot of people aren't going to be doing that right now, uh, understandably so with how expensive an XY base booster box is. But on average, uh, you're going to get 4.14 total pulls, total hits out of your uh, XY base booster box. So if you have a sealed XY base booster box, just kind of chilling, should have between four and five ultra rares in it. The fun part is, at the time, uh, it would cost you about $864 to complete that set. If you pulled perfectly, now it's impossible to pull perfectly. Nobody's gonna be able to do that. But if you pulled perfectly, uh, and you did not pull any duplicates when it came to the most difficult rarity to pull, it would cost you $864. How did I come up with that number? Well, uh, you're getting 1.04 uh, full arts per box. There's six full arts in the set, so you're gonna need at least seven booster boxes to pull each full art. It's not a perfect method, but uh, we're gonna main re we're gonna remain consistent throughout the entirety of the rest of these numbers. So at least it's consistent, uh, which is what's important. So $864. Obviously, you're not gonna pull perfectly. You're probably gonna pull a duplicate in there, uh, but at least $864 in order to get all of your full arts. If we look at flash fire here, uh, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these. Obviously, you guys can go through this on your own. Just pause it or mute me because you don't like hearing my voice, which is totally understandable when I sound like this or when I don't sound like this. 2.9 nine regular arts per box 1.41 full arts per box full arts really started going up but if you go down here steam siege 2.19 you're averaging over two full arts per set which is really cool uh but pull full rates or pull pull rates for the most part remaining pretty consistent you're going to pull around five to six 
with every single set that comes out. Pull rates really start changing when you start seeing an increase in EXs here. So like Primal Clash, there's 32 uh, Ultra Rares in the set. So pull rates go up a little bit, 5.65 per booster box. Roaring Skies, there's 24. You're going to pull roughly 6.3 Ultra Rares. Uh, but if you look at the numbers on the right hand side here, the cost of how much it would be in order to complete the set, really not that bad for any of these sets. Uh, the most expensive one is going to be Ancient Origins. Obviously, that has the most Ultra Rares in it, 28, but it also has the highest Secret Rare count. So when you're only pulling 0.41 Secret Rares per box, it's going to be more expensive in order to get all of those secret rares. You have to get five secret rares, so you're going to have to open up uh, 13 booster boxes if you pull perfectly in order to get all of those secret rares. Now, the probability of that happening is obviously, you know, extremely, extremely low, but this is the bare minimum that it would cost you. But six hits per box, not too bad, uh, and that's pretty much what you get for the rest of uh, the XY block, with the exception of Steam Siege, which has a much, much lower... Look at the Ultra account in Steam siege only 16 uh, so you only get 2.44 regular arts per box still relatively high when it comes to full arts 2.19 part of that is because there's more more full arts than there is regulars uh, and then a 0.3 fates collide with only one secret rare uh, 0.12 is your secret rare pull rate for that set uh, but overall not too bad on average it's going to cost you 1116 dollars on average to complete one of the xy sets um not too bad. Sun and Moon is where things really start getting expensive. And this is what I think Pokemon really needs to pay attention to. And this is kind of the important thing that I wanted to highlight. Once you start getting to the point where your pull rates for secret rares, look at this, are remaining fairly consistent, but your secret rare count is going up dramatically. So you are so much higher. Evolutions didn't have any secret rares. Sun and Moon, you have 14. Guardians Rising, you have 24. But look at this. Sun and Moon, 14 secret rares. You're averaging 0.83 per booster box. Guardians Rising, 24. You're averaging 0.81. Your your rates are actually worse. Worse pull rates with Guardians Rising to pull a secret rare. Yet there's 10 additional secret rares in the set. That makes things extremely frustrating to try and complete the set. Because your specific pull rates. The only numbers where things change as things go up. Is your regular art pull rates start going up. Uh, Sun and Moon Base. 4 regular arts per box. 1.51 full arts and then 0.83 for secret rares it's going to cost you at least twenty two hundred dollars to complete a set if you're trying to open up uh, a master set of sun and moon nobody's going to be doing this but i just wanted to show those numbers so you understood how things change throughout the years if we go down here uh cosmic eclipse once we start getting a ton more cards but you also start getting 66 total ultra rares with 23 of them being secret rares and 0.79 is your secret rare uh amount per booster box that's your pull rate per booster box 5.91 total hits per booster box you're looking at at least four thousand three hundred and twenty dollars if you pull perfectly you need to open up a lot of booster boxes uh in order to get a master set that's if you pull perfectly which isn't going to happen on average three thousand four hundred eighty seven dollars and thirty three cents this is where the problem comes in right here you have this giant increase in secret rares but pull rates for secret rares pretty much stay consistent. Anywhere between 0.75 and 1 secret rare per box. Does it change in Sword and Shield? Uh, nope. Evolving Skies it did. Uh, every other set it doesn't. Stays pretty much this, the same. This is looking at over a thousand packs with each uh, each set. And the Sword and Shield set's obviously a lot more because I was able to just kind of use the pull rate data that I, I had already compiled uh, involving thousands of booster packs. But if you're looking at Sword and Shield base, 0.89 secret rares per booster box. If you're looking at Chilling Rain, 0.82 secret rares per booster box. Absolutely crazy. That's why it's going to cost you $6,192 at least to complete your Chilling Rain Master Set. Do you know the probability of opening up uh, booster boxes and not pulling any duplicates for 35 secret rares with an average pull rate of 0.82? This is it right here. <laughs> this is your probability right here. Let me, let me move this over right here. Uh, this amount of zeros and then 1%. So what is that? One fiftieth of a percent? That's your probability of pulling perfectly. So it's not gonna happen. Uh, but re regardless, as long as we, the numbers are consistent, which is what is what is the most important thing. Uh, these numbers on the right hand side here, these blue numbers that you can't see because my ugly face is covering them, all these numbers right here, this is what you can go on eBay right now and buy those master sets for. It's crazy. Sword and Shield, uh, $2,304 minimum to open up booster boxes. 
to complete the master set. You can go buy it for $900, the entire master set. Somebody already did all the work for you. It's worth $900. Uh, Evolving Skies, $2,300 you can go spend on a master set. Or you can try and pull it for $4,608, knowing that the probability is like 1 50th of a percent. Chilling Rain, you can go buy the master set for $1,550, or you can go spend $6,200 in booster packs and hope that you are uh, the luckiest person alive that is going to be able to, to pull um, perfectly. Uh, but the secret rare numbers aren't changing. And I think that's where Pokemon really needs to start kind of stepping in and decide whether or not, hey, what can we do? Maybe we need to start including a secret rare, a guaranteed secret rare. People love opening Evolving Skies, and there is basically guaranteeing a secret rare per box, but I think we really need to get this number above one. And I think that that is a small enough change that it's not going to impact the price completely. A lot of people say, well, it's going to destroy the pricing. And not necessarily. If we look at some of the alternate art cards that have released in Japan, which does guarantee a secret rare in the, in the United States, uh, Tornadus V Alternate Art, eight $15 in the US, $25 uh, in Japanese. These are just uh, most recent completed eBay listings, $25. The Galarian Rapidash alternate art, uh, the last sold one in Japanese, $30 in the US, $28. Galarian Zapdos, the last one sold in the in Japanese was $52. Uh, in English, it was 45. Galarian Moltres, 100 in Japanese. I'm not going to go through all these. You can kind of look at them on, on your own here. Uh, Umbreon VMAX was $400, the last one sold. Uh, they guarantee an ultra. They guarantee that secret or at least one per box. Maybe we need to start going that right. Or maybe it's time to start looking at getting rid of rainbow rares. Maybe it's time to start looking at getting this secret or number back down so it's not so expensive to try and open up packs to complete a master set. Pokemon is going to want their product to sell at retail stores. They want you to open up packs. They don't want you to go buy a bunch of singles on the secondary market. What does that have to do with Pokemon? They don't, they're not selling those cards. They want you to focus on the booster packs. Uh, but I think that they need to start looking at these numbers right here, how much it costs to potentially open a master set and realize, hey, little Timmy's not going to have $6,200 just sitting around in his piggy bank to go spend on Chilling Rain booster packs. And little Timmy certainly isn't lucky enough that he's going to pull perfectly in order to get all the cards uh, without any duplicates. So it's really just food for thought, kind of an opinionated discussion of where Pokemon needs to go and what needs to happen. And I don't know if I know the solution, I don't know if I have all the answers, and I certainly don't, but I think that this information is relevant. I do think it is important to look at to get a better understanding of where things really started turning. And that was really with the Sun and Moon block when Rainbow Rare started getting introduced and we saw a decrease uh, or an increase in uh, Secret Rares, but not by enough. You were going from, I mean, we were quadrupling the, the Secret Rare count, but only doubling the pull rate. So you're going from 0.41 to 0.81. You're still getting well less than a box, but we're still, but we're getting over 20 secret rares per booster box or per set. It makes things very difficult. So I wanted to throw this information out there. I'm sorry it's not organized as well as you probably want it to be or as well as it probably should have been. And I do apologize for that, but I really think that this stuff is important. And I really wanted to share it with you guys to get your opinions on it, get your take on it. And give you a better understanding. If you're going to the store, with, a, with your heart set on opening up Evolving Skies until you pull a Master Set, I just wanted to show you this is this is at least what you're looking at, and it's probably going to be at least double that, because it's very, very expensive and very difficult to do. I want you to make the best decisions with your money, and I don't want you to get frustrated uh, and then leave the game, leave the hobby. Uh, I want you guys to stick around for a really long time. I want to be able to um, do business with you for a long time, hang out at events, you know, do fun things, enjoy this, this hobby together. Um, so I wanted to share that information. It's, it's frustrating, uh, and it's not, it's, it's, I, I think that there's a better solution to it. I don't know what it is, and I don't know what this video can accomplish, and I know I'm just one person sitting behind a mic, uh, and behind a computer screen, talking with, uh, some numbers that I researched, uh, but I do think it's important to kind of pay attention to, and at least get a discussion started, and hopefully if the discussion starts, uh, and grows far enough, then hopefully we can see a change, and I think Brilliant Stars is an awesome step in the right direction, I think the introduction of character rares really helps things, maybe you start putting some alternate arts in that reverse hollow slot, that may diminish the value of it, but it's going to make people feel a lot better when they're opening up a booster box, because right now, opening up a booster box, going to the store, um, buying 10 booster packs, that's not going to, I mean, buying 30 booster packs, buying 40 booster packs, that still doesn't guarantee you a secret rare. And if you're pulling, looking to pull an Umbreon and you just spent uh, $180 on booster packs at Target, that's a lot of money to spend um, without pulling it. So uh, 
use the information however you want. I really just want to throw it out there for you guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me talk. I'm sorry it's been like 25 minutes. If you're still here, thank you so much for making it through uh, the entire way. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think, what your opinion is. I really appreciate you guys taking a listen. I will talk to you guys soon. Until then, peace.